By the end of this chapter, you should be able to Identify the requirements for main and auxiliary steering gears Identify which organizations set the rules for steering gears Identify the essential SOLAS operational requirements for steering gears on different ship types and in different circumstances Regulations regarding steering gears are set out by the International Maritime Organization, the IMO, in SOLAS. Many of the rules for steering gears set out in SOLAS are based on lessons learned from the grounding and loss of the tanker Amoko Cadiz in 1978. There are many different combinations of steering gear that will satisfy the requirements of SOLAS. There are also some special provisions in SOLAS for certain types of older ships. There are also an increasing number of non-standard arrangements in use, such as podded drives coming into use on modern ships. In all cases, Flag State and Classification Society rules ensure that every ship will comply with, or have equivalence to, the SOLAS requirements. The key point for ship staff is that they understand how to operate and test their own steering gear in order to comply with the requirements of SOLAS. To learn about the loss of the tanker Amoko Cadiz and how this has influenced the SOLAS regulations for steering gear, click on the button. The Amoko Cadiz was a very large crude carrier, VLCC, which ran aground, broke up, and sank off the coast of France in 1978, resulting in the largest oil spill in history at that time. En route from the Persian Gulf to Rotterdam, the ship encountered stormy weather with gale conditions and high seas whilst in the English Channel. A heavy wave hit the ship's rudder, and it was found that she was no longer responding to the helm. This was due to the shearing of studs in the steering gear, causing a loss of hydraulic fluid. Attempts to repair the damage were made, but proved unsuccessful, and further damage to the steering gear occurred as the heavy seas caused the rudder to swing violently from side to side once the hydraulic fluid was lost from the system. Amoko Cadiz contained over 200,000 tonnes of crude oil and 4,000 tonnes of fuel oil, which were spilled into the sea. The incident led to revised requirements in SOLAS for steering gears on certain ships, most notably oil tankers. There were many lessons learned from the loss of the Amoko Cadiz. The crew on the Amoko Cadiz had to try and top up the hydraulic oil tank by climbing a ladder with a bucket of oil. For hydraulic power-operated steering systems, in the event of leakage, there should be a readily available supply of clean oil to recharge at least one power-actuating system. SOLAS rules now require an early warning low-level alarm for each steering gear hydraulic tank, and a fixed storage tank permanently connected to the steering gear, and able to recharge at least one power actuating system from the steering gear compartment. The crew attempting to repair the hydraulic system on the Amoko Cadiz were slipping on the oil that had previously leaked. SOLAS rules now require arrangements to ensure working access to the steering gear and controls, even in the event of hydraulic fluid leakage handrails, gratings, or non-slip surfaces. There were means to operate the four-ram steering gear on the Amoko Cadiz as a two-ram system, but the crew had not practiced these. In addition, it should have been possible to hydraulically lock the rudder in position, but on the Amoko Cadiz, these isolating valves were never closed to check their operation. They had their spindles painted when in the open position, and could not afterwards be fully closed. Steering gears should be tested prior to leaving port, 
and emergency operation of the steering gear should be tested every three months, in order to ensure that all the equipment needed for emergency operation is working, and that the crew are familiar with how to operate it. To see what Solas has to say about the requirements for the steering gear on different ship types, click on each of the hotspots shown. If the ship has more than one rudder and is navigable with only one rudder, and each rudder has its own independent steering gear, then only one main steering gear needs to be fitted to each rudder. The main steering gear must have two or more identical power units. With the exception of passenger ships, these can be run together to move the rudder from 35 degrees on either side to 30 degrees on the other side in not more than 28 seconds. Passenger ships may be fitted with separate main and auxiliary steering gears, but will normally be fitted with two, or occasionally more, identical hydraulic power units. The power units must be able to meet the requirement to move the rudder from 35 degrees on either side to 30 degrees on the other side in not more than 28 seconds, while one power unit is out of service. In other ships, this requirement can be met with all power units running. In passenger ships greater than 70,000 tons, the main steering gear must have two or more identical power units. Because of the increased safety and pollution risks associated with these ships, the hydraulic steering gears must have oil leak detection. In the event of loss of steering capability due to a single failure in any part of one of the power actuating systems of the main steering gear, excluding the tiller, quadrant or components serving the same purpose, steering capability must be regained not more than 45 seconds after the loss of one power actuating system. Because of the proven reliability of some units, on tankers, chemical tankers and gas carriers below 100,000 deadweight tons, rudder actuators do not need to be duplicated, allowing two ram or single vane rotary gears, providing they meet IMO guidelines on strength and reliability. For single rudder tankers, chemical tankers and gas carriers above 100,000 tons, SOLAS rules require full duplication of components up to the rudder stock and for this reason, steering gears with a minimum of two pairs of hydraulic chambers are required.
Every ship must have a main steering gear and an auxiliary steering gear, but there is no need for an auxiliary steering gear if the main steering gear has two or more power units. And after a single failure in its piping system or in one of the power units, the defect can be isolated so that steering capability can be maintained or speedily regained. Each hydraulic reservoir must be fitted with a low-level alarm to warn of an oil leak. Safety valves are provided to reduce the risk of hydraulic pipes bursting. A main steering gear is one which is capable of pushing the rudder over from 35 degrees on one side to 35 degrees on the other side, with the ship at its deepest seagoing draft and running ahead at maximum ahead service speed, and under the same conditions, from 35 degrees on either side to 30 degrees on the other side, in not more than 28 seconds. An auxiliary steering gear is one which is capable of putting the rudder over from 15 degrees on one side to 15 degrees on the other side in not more than 60 seconds, with a ship at its deepest seagoing draft and running ahead at one half of the maximum ahead service speed, or seven knots, whichever is the greater. Most modern ships use an electrical signal to pass orders to the steering gear room, as this makes for easier connection to the autopilot. Once inside the steering gear room, either of two different systems is typically found, but both rely on solenoid coils to operate a three-position directional control valve. On ships with main pumps of the constant delivery type, the solenoids control the output from the main pumps. On small systems, the solenoids may move the directional control valve directly, as seen in this example. On larger systems, the solenoids may be used to control a bleed-off from the main oil supply, which acts as the pilot control of a larger directional valve. On ships with variable delivery main steering pumps, the solenoids control the output of a small hydraulic pump, often called a Jani or Arcus pump. The oil from this is used to operate a small control ram, which controls the output of the main pump. A few newer designs use electronic speed control of the motors to enable variable delivery from the main pumps. The pumps are stopped or reversed as required, but the general principle of operation is otherwise the same as traditional designs. Steering gear control must be available from the bridge and in the steering compartment. It must be possible to disconnect bridge control from the steering gear from within the steering gear compartment. In other words, if the bridge were put out of action in an emergency, then we should be able to take control of the steering gear from within the steering compartment. This is why the rules also require the rudder position to be indicated both on the bridge and in the steering compartment. Indication in the steering flat is usually taken direct from the rudder stock, so when testing gears, we should check that the rudder position indicated on the bridge is the true rudder position, as indicated in the steering flat. Solas rules require that in areas where navigation demands special caution, ships must have more than one steering gear power unit in operation when such units can be operated together. There is no need for an auxiliary steering gear if the main steering gear has two or more power units, and after a single failure in its piping system or in one of the power units, steering capability can be speedily regained. On ships with more than one rudder, only one main steering gear needs to be fitted to each rudder. Ships over 70,000 tons must have two or more identical power units. In passenger ships, each power unit must be able to meet the requirements of a main steering gear. Tankers must have oil leak detection, and in the event of a single failure in any part of the power actuating system, steering capability must be regained within 45 seconds. Above 100,000 deadweight tons, there must be full duplication of components up to the rudder stock. 
Most ships use an electrical signal from the bridge to operate solenoid valves to directly control the flow of oil to the steering gear, but other methods are sometimes used.